I bet you never thought you'd hear from me again. It's been, what, a quarter of a year since my last upload? Which you should definitely check out after this, by the way, haha. <laughs> and within that time frame, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet's DLC, The Teal Mask, has released. I was surprised at how much of an enjoyable time I had with this new expansion to the game. With one of my favorite additions to the franchise this DLC brings with it being this little fucker. I can't help but find this thing adorable. It ticks off so many aspects that I love to see in Pokemon designs. Silly, goofy, small, and competitively busted, okay. Luckily, how good Ogre Pond is in competitive Pokemon has no correlation with what we're doing today. Just the different masks she can wear, including the titular teal mask, wow. With the other masks being the Wellspring mask, the Hearth Flame mask, and the Cornerstone mask. You obtain these through naturally going through the DLC story, and as I was obtaining them, I thought, well, what if Minecraft? For now, I'll just be creating the non terra state of each mask, and none of the festival masks for now either. For this video, just Ogre Pond's masks. Sorry to all you Pheasantipity mask enthusiasts out there, all one, maybe, of you. Better luck next time. Well. Now that we have our semantics out of the way, and because I don't know how to make the parts of the video where I'm modeling or programming interesting, let's skip right ahead to where I have these models finished and in Minecraft, shall we? Okay, fellas, are you ready to see the first mask? Yay or nay? Leave a like on the video for yes. Leave a dis- Okay, screw this. Let's have a look. Yeah, the teal mask. Oh my god, I love how this came out. I am so happy with this. Look at that. I don't have a zoom mod, but um, maybe if I- Yeah. Oh my god. That is so cool looking. Have them down in armor stands down here. Let's go have a look. Here we have the four different Ogre Pond masks. We have the Teal Mask, the Wellspring Mask, the Hearth Flame Mask, the Cornerstone Mask. These are fucking awesome. Look at this thing. This is the Plant one, the Water one, the Fire one, the Rock one. Uh, I forget which one is the best competitively. It's either the Fire one or the Water one, I think. If my memory serves correctly. That is so cool. Okay, I love how these things look. Let's have a look up here at all the item frames. So this is how they'll look on item frames as well. Uh, we can have a go. We can go have a look in here. Hold on, I'll need to get out a free cam. But um, I built this so you wouldn't see it at the start of this section here. But in the start of the video, I have these here on the wall. But that's not normally possible. So I take one of these masks, try to place it, boom, pumpkin. I'll, sh I'll explain that later. But what we want to do is we want to get an item frame and just put it there. You'll see nothing's there. That's because I have another resource pack that makes normal item frames invisible. I do this to place and decorate with the masks here, as you can see. I have a teal mask over here on this little, this little table. But yeah, so if you want to place these, you're going to have you're going to have to get invisible item frames. So just FYI, get invisible item frames. And last, you've probably seen this here, the spell tag. This is actually just, you know, very quick, simple. I thought it would be fun. I love these types of Jiangxi type. Jiangxi. Oh. It's under the hair layer, this one is. And I guess that's intentional, but 
It doesn't really work too well on the Okayu skin, no. I'll have a look at all of the different masks on as well. Let's see. We already seen the teal mask. Let's see the wellspring mask. This, this, you know what? This one's really cute, actually. I, I, I like this one now that I'm wearing it. I was sleeping on it before, but now that, now that I'm wearing it, I like this one. I like the size. I like, I, I like the size. I think it fits. The size and the shape go well together. This one's a bit smaller than the rest of them, I think. Okay, I'll stop schizo ranting about that one. Uh, let's look at this one. This is the hearth flame mask. This one's pretty cool. Ooh. This one's a little bit big though, like the forehead. The forehead looks huge. I think that might be what it is. I think it might be the forehead that's throwing me off from this one. Just a huge, massive forehead. Let's have a look at the cornerstone mask lastly. <laughs> this one looks so goofy. Bro. Ooh, ooh. This is like a... What's his name? From from Crash Bandicoot. What's what's the mask guy's name? This is like a stone version version of him. Is it Aku Aku? Kaku Kaku? Kabu Kabu Kabu. Guys, leave a like on this video for Aku Aku. So I showed you how when you place mask it turns into a pumpkin. I'm gonna explain how these actually work. So if you want to get these in game. You're going to have to take an anvil, and you see I have carved pumpkins on me. That is because when we take a carved pumpkin and we rename it to say, let's get a teal mask, we get a teal mask. The item changes in our inventory there. If we go to teal here, replace it with say, hearth flame, changes to a hearth flame mask. Um, if we take a sea lantern, you may be thinking, okay, let's try with a sea lantern. Teal mask doesn't work. The way this works is it checks for specifically carved pumpkins, it checks the ID of the name, and if it's, say, a teal mask, it makes the model the teal mask. And then we can wear it because it's a carved pumpkin, there's no blur, and this is awesome. But for now, I hope you enjoyed the showcase of the video, and if you are not planning on downloading, I guess this is where you hop off the train. Please don't, please don't, please don't. Please stay, please stay, please stay, please stay. Stick around, stick around, stick around. Okay, back to the video. Now that we've seen the resource pack, for those of you interested in downloading, there will be a link down in the description. I had a great time playing through Scarlet and Violet's first DLC, and I had a great time making this resource pack as well. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. Both the new DLC and the resource pack. Whether it's just a new shiny you've got in Kitakami, or maybe some idea you have in mind you can use this resource pack for, I'd love to read about them down in the comments below. Also, I'd appreciate a like on this video if you enjoy the content I produce, and I'd love to see lots of downloads on this resource pack. One last quick update before I go, for those of you who like my Cobblemon content, I promise there is an update to my Paradox resource pack that is finished. I just need to produce the video on it. So once that's done, expect that soon. But with that, thank you for watching. Ciao!